Extreme heat this summer has pushed outdoor renovation projects to the bottom of the priority list, but recent rain has brought cooler weather, so we are headed back outside to DIY our fence and give the front yard some much needed love. Hey guys, welcome back to the cottage. So we are gonna go back in time a little bit. If you guys remember in February of this year, we made some major pretty progress to the exterior and front yard of the cottage. I really wanted to add a textural element to our home using a material that was locally sourced and really common in this area, which was limestone rock. And limestone here is mined in various colors, but we picked one with the least amount of yellow because it wasn't my favorite. And then we picked a complementing neutral mortar so that we could overgrout it and smear it onto the surface of the rock to give it a really overgrouted look. I did contemplate doing the rock by myself and then after picking up one of the rocks I was like okay let's hire a mason to do this project for us and we added rock to the exterior of the fireplace and also built five matching limestone rock columns along the front property line. And this was to anchor our fence too, eventually. It took him about four days to complete the entire project. And to say I was in love would be an understatement. I wish I had the words or more words to express how in love I am with this fireplace and this column. I love them. So much. You have no idea. I'm obsessed with them. I can't stop staring at pictures I've taken of them. This is amazing, amazing, be pretty, pro pretty progress. What I've been trying to get to for so long. So now that we had the columns in place, it was time to design our fence. What, I, what did I want? What did I want it to look like? And I started to pay really close attention to houses as we pass them. What kind of fences they had versus the style of the home. Did I want a white picket fence that kind of was the first to come to mind when you think of a cottage home? Or did I want a black iron fence? Or did I want a wooden fence? Did I want it short, tall, really, really closed up or more like flowy and, and, and see-through almost. And since we had black as an accent on the windows, I just, when I, when I thought about the house, I just saw it as being a black fence. And I didn't want black wood, so I was like, well, my dad is a pretty good welder. And once I realized that, I was like, well, it was a no-brainer. We were gonna do a black wrought iron fence because I felt like it would give us the same effect that black trimmed windows do. It doesn't block your eye and your vision from looking outside the house. I'm hoping that the fence does the same idea. Being black right iron, you'll just kind of look through and past the fence at the cottage itself. So I think we're making the right decision. So then I started looking at inspiration pictures and all of the ones that I really liked had those little pointy tops on them. It looked really New Orleans and, and I don't know what they're called, but they were like spiky, you know? And my dad immediately was like, we have deer here. They like to jump things, even tall things. I was like, whoa, okay. The last thing we want is a deer to get hurt jumping this fence. So that was out. So we knew it had to have a flat, a flatter top um, and not spiky things. So when I started designing it, I still didn't want it to look really modern and just be like a flat top, a flat bottom, and then the verticals in the center. I wanted to add some dimension and some character and then I saw this inspiration picture and I was like Ooh, that might be really cool to do along the bottom It would add a lot of texture and detail to the bottom and also add dimension because it would actually stick out Side of the flat panel. It would actually help to keep Kinsley In and not have her run away So there was a lot of advantages to having these pieces go all the way down to the bottom So I sketched out what I wanted. I gave it to my dad and I was like this is what you were I'm thinking is this possible we tweaked it a little bit to make sure that it was all gonna fit and then it was time to order supplies so since my dad is gonna be welding it there isn't any labor cost in this project which is amazing for us but we did have to order materials so we made a list of all of the linear footage that we were gonna need uh, for this project so the the post the two inch posts that go into the ground for structural the horizontals the verticals the caps everything and placed the order it arrived in a big 18 wheeler and we got it delivered to my parents house so my dad could start working on it first my dad cut the two inch posts and since my contractor was already out here working on another project they wrapped up early one day he asked me if there was anything else the guys could help with so i had them dig our two foot 
poles into the ground for the poles and fill it with concrete and set these two inch posts for us to anchor the panels to, which was great. And then my dad started by building a jig, what he called it, basically a template made out of wood so that all of the verticals and all of the horizontals will sit in the perfect place so that he can just lay them down and weld them together. He actually did let me practice welding. That is definitely a DIY that I'm not gonna accomplish anytime soon, but he's much better at it. So I let him do his thing. He tacked together one panel so that I could see it and make sure that it was exactly what I wanted. And it was, it was going to be perfect. I love the dimension that the bottom layer is giving the overall panel. So he continued to make seven additional panels and he finished this in like a week, you guys. It was absolutely crazy. <laughs> We loaded them up and brought them all down to the cottage and placed them exactly where they needed to go. Since each panel was a little different in width, we had them numbered, we, we placed them all, and Romeo and I helped hold it in place while my dad welded it to the two inch posts. And that was it. He also made us a temporary gate out of scrap iron that he had from this project and other projects, just so we had something to put up for privacy, um, but we will be DIYing a new gate when I finally decide and actually design the fence that I actually want. <sighs> Good morning, guys. We are already obviously hard at work. I rented a skid loader. I didn't know what that was. I uh, kind of knew what it was. Didn't know how to order one, but I ordered one for two days because we have lots of outdoor projects that we need to accomplish. We've already been hard at work just cleaning the yard. All of the wood scraps, the extra building materials, all of that stuff that we needed to organize into the back. And we are on to job two and three kind of simultaneously. We are carrying all of the limestone rocks, the leftover material that we had from the fireplace and also the rock columns in the front. We're carrying all those to the back so that we could use them for a future DIY and taking down this chain link fence. It's blocking the fireplace. We don't need it anymore. We have the fence in the front so I can come down. <laughs> Front yard it just opened it all up I knew it was like stunting the front yard so much and it was making all this pretty rock like not be a focal point it wasn't I was like did I mess up should I have not done that fireplace like you can't even see it but I knew I want to see it when the fence is gone we've already done it you know makes the yard feel so much bigger we have a side yard okay time for our next job I had three truckloads, I think that's a ton, I'm not sure, but three truckloads of topsoil or dirt delivered. And we are going to be leveling out the front yard. It's not level. <laughs> Water runs towards the house, which is bad. We're bringing bucket loads of dirt up to the front so that we can level the land, but level it from side to side, but also slope it away from the house so the water doesn't flow towards the house. So that's our goal.
Okay, we have made it to paint prep day. So it's the night before I wanna paint the iron fence and it's obviously going to be black, but we have, is, there's a little bit of prep work we need to do in order to get to, to the painting stage. My dad has made and painted loads of fences, loads of iron projects. And what he's found that he says is using this clean strip concrete and metal prep, it actually helps the paint stick. Since our metal is fairly new, there's not a, not a lot of rust. And if you leave iron unpainted, it can rust through completely and then just disintegrate. So that's not good. Spray it on, you leave it on for about 15 to 20 minutes it says and then rinse or wipe the surface with a damp cloth to remove any of the rust residue. We're gonna power wash it off and tonight. And then it says paint treated surface within 48 hours of application to prevent formation of new rust. So we're just prepping the metal, getting ready to paint. Dilute one part product with three parts water in a plastic container, and you can apply it with a paintbrush, spray bottle, or pump up sprayer to metal. It's gonna take me a while. So I figure once I get to the end and I have sprayed everything, it's now time to start over and rinse it off is basically my thinking. <laughs> Already. Product, if the metal is like really rusted, uh, you can leave it on overnight and kind of work the product into the rust. What's more on our fence is the meal, like the, the product when my dad was welding. So that's really what we're concerned with getting off since this is new metal. Um, so there's just like maybe a few things. So I'm just going and like brushing those few rust pieces, but I don't think that we need to particularly leave it on overnight. So now I'm gonna power wash it and get off that product and let it dry really well overnight, and then it's ready to prime and paint. I'm excited. Okay, you guys, it's paint day. We're gonna prime it first. I'm gonna spray it. We're not painting any of this by hand. Um, so I put my paint sprayer and the bucket of paint that it pulls from in a wheelbarrow because I feel like it's gonna be easier for me to like roll it to the other side and roll it outside around the gate. I also was worried about diluting the primer any, like tenting it gray since we're going with a darker pink color for the fence, which is black. I was worried about tenting it any because I want this to have a really strong adhesion and none of the properties of the primer to be like compromised by tinting it because that's basically what happens. You don't want to tint it too much. That's why you tint it like a gray color. Uh, so we're painting, we're doing it white and then we'll probably have to do two coats of black. We wrapped all of the columns in plastic last night before we sprayed. My fear is getting paint on these columns. So we're gonna prime it first. would look like white here you go <laughs> it's actually pretty but can you imagine how dirty it would get over time <laughs> definitely gonna do it black I got three gallons I didn't think a five gallon bucket was like worth it it was still cheaper to do three gallons because I think that's gonna be more than enough 
Uh, we're going with the same just straight black color that we did on the windows in a satin finish because I don't like anything too shiny. I didn't want to do semi-gloss or high gloss. Satin is just a good middle of the road not too shiny but not too flat kind of sheen uh, so we're gonna do that we're gonna do two coats it's also really important to make sure that you're using an exterior paint that's really good for metal we'll be no hard goodbyes think i were civilized Be on our separate ways as we fade into gray. But I still miss the way. Okay, the fence has been drying for about a day and a half now so that we can take off all of the plastic that we protected the rock with. And our next step is we've got all these little, I call them Lego pieces, but they're basically little cap plugs for these smaller iron pieces that we used as like a decorative look um, so that water doesn't get in them we're gonna plug the top and the bottom so they last a really long time my dad said do it after we painted because he really wanted to make sure that it was um, sealed really well the iron itself with paint and then we can cap them with the plastic caps since I removed the plastic I can go back with just a brush and some black paint to do any touch-ups you guys enjoyed the journey of DIYing our own iron fence. I am very grateful to have a dad that is a welder. He made this process a lot easier on me and a lot more budget friendly. So I wanted to give you guys cost that I would love to know the cost of something like this, especially with a rock detail because I feel like the rock detail was such an added look caught it wasn't structural it wasn't anything other than a really beautiful look for the house and really upgrading the curb appeal but with rock comes cost now this is going to be different for every area for e different times of year we definitely did this building in a pandemic <laughs> what contractor you go with our masons were so amazing they showed up on time they did the job quickly and they did it really really well and that to me was amazing so i wanted to give you guys costs so it costs us five columns along the front of the property it was forty four hundred dollars in labor and twenty six hundred dollars in material so that's the concrete them doing the concrete slab the rock the sand the mortar and the toppers here so all in it was seven thousand dollars which divided by five is fourteen hundred dollars a column so it was definitely an added expense but we were DIYing our own iron fence, so we just had to pay for material. The material for all of the iron, the caps, the thicker two inch posts and everything for eight panels were $1,680 and zero for labor. <laughs> Thank you, dad. Or maybe maybe a dinner or two for dad. They've actually hired people to do fences before. So based on their knowledge, I asked them what it would have cost us to actually hire someone to build a custom fence like this. So we have eight panels and also install it. He said it would uh, an estimate would be about $2,500 a panel. That's material and labor. So for eight panels, that would have been $20,000. So 
dollars and we just paid 1600 for labor so we got the pretty look with the rock that I wanted to bring in it was definitely a surprise I didn't quite know how much rock would be but we got to bring that into the house and it looks great and stately and gorgeous and it just gives our house so much curb appeal and of course as we do more in terms of landscaping the flowers I want and finishing the house and it's just gonna have so much curb appeal just so you have an idea of what we paid but of course it's going to be different for every area for every person for every contractor you have to get your own quotes if you wanted something like this so I hope you guys enjoyed the journey of building our DIY fence she's beautiful and painted so next up we're gonna be designing a gate we're gonna DIY that as well we're also going to be doing a beautiful paved walkway up to the stairs to the front patio for the front porch doing the railings and stuff on the front porch so make sure that you guys are subscribed to my vlog channel because I'm about to go shopping for the pavers so you guys can help me pick which ones are going to give us the look that we're going for I will leave it linked below for you guys and I will see you guys in the next episode bye guys what a long process oh we have a dear friend hi oh okay bye <laughs>